Hello and welcome to another tutorial from MoICT. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to do a sprite sheet animation using Windows Form C Sharp. I'm going to be using the paint event specifically for this tutorial just to uh, display how it works. So if we take a look at the project setup at the moment, I'm inside the debug folder. If I go to the images folder that I placed there, uh, as you can see, we have a number of PNG images. These are single um, images that are of a frame of the animation. So basically it's a purple heart that goes around uh, in a, a three dimensional animation. And we also have these cute cats there uh, to use it as a background. So you can, you know, pretty much use any image that you want. I found this one quite cute. Um, so I'm just going to use that in the project. Um, okay, so uh, the way this project is going to run is if I just run this one now. So right now I have the empty form, just the titles being changed on there. I just click play. As you can see, the background has been applied and you see all these uh, purple heart animations that are moving up. So we're going to be creating a art class where we're going to tell it what frames to use and how to reset once the frame has been used from that folder. Okay. So this is going to be a fun tutorial to go over how to do something quite unusual in Windows Form uh, using C Sharp. So hopefully you guys enjoy this one and let's get started by creating a new project. Okay, so in this window, I'm just going to click on create a new project. Uh, I've been using Windows Form app.net for a while now. This shows up my recent templates. I'm just going to select that. Click next. Uh, let's name this one Art Animation with NG. WinForms more ICT. Okay, so heart animation with PNG WinForms more ICT. Next, uh, for the framework, we're not doing anything specific for the framework, so framework six is perfectly fine for this one. So click create. Okay, so here we have our empty project. So before we get started, so go into the size mode here for the form. I'm going to change that to 800 and then 600. So it's just going to be an 800 by 600 form. I'm going to change the title of this one to a, um, a heart animation with PNG no ICT. Okay, so it just shows a nice little title there for us. Okay, uh, we are also going to be creating a class for this project. So I'm just going to quickly go ahead and create a class. So if I right click on the project name there, go to add, click on class. Okay, select the first option there and I'm going to call this one Art. Okay, and then after that we can click add. So the heart class will get added into your solutions explorer. As you can see, you've got your form1.cs and then you've got the heart.cs. So form1.cs is this here. So this uh, is the design view. And if I right click and go to view code, I can go to the code view for that form, right? And then, you know, both of them are slightly similar. But we'll see how to work with them and communicate between them right uh, one thing we're going to need for the form is a timer i'm going to drag and drop a timer from the toolbox so open the toolbox find timer drag and drop it there i'm going to name the timer heart timer Let's enter set enable to true and then set the interval to 20. okay and inside of the properties window, if you click on the little events uh, icon there, the lightning bolt. Okay, I can go in here and now I can say timer event. So that's the first event that gets added to the form. The second event is I have to click on the form. Just click on any empty space on the form here. And then let's go and find a paint, paint event there. I'm going to say form paint event. Okay, so I'll call one timer event for the timer and then paint form paint event for the paint event. And uh, now to start, let's go ahead and um, once you download the images, make sure you extract them properly. I don't know why this one shows up like it has a background, but it actually doesn't. It's a transparent image. That's okay. Okay, so once you extracted the images, you'll see that you got your PNG from 1 to 12 and then you also have a background. I'm going to select all of these copy them, go back to Visual Studio, I'm going to right click on the name of the project, go to open folder in the file explorer, so that should just open the project directory here, I want to go to bin, debug, net, six windows, and then in here I'm going to make a new folder called images, right, inside of that I'm going to paste 
all the pictures including the background inside of this one right so to apply the background um, to the form obviously you have got your normal way where we can do it through the properties but there's another way where you can do it through the script so if I just run into the script now and I'm going to make a new function here for the sake of the applying the background to the form okay and let's just call this one private void setup form like so okay and then in this case we're going to say this dot background image is equals to image dot from file right. and we have an images folder and then bg dot jpg is our image that we're after okay and once this gets applied we also want to make sure that it stretches from corner to corner on the form let's say this dot background image layout is equals to image layout dot stretch like so okay so and we also need to run this function so i'm going to go inside of there and say dot form let's just run the function from inside I click play on this one now uh, it's saying here is that it's cannot find oh yeah instead of putting a dot there I put a comma there okay. oh, my mistake let's go and fix that and rerun it again okay there we go our cute cut pictures are now in the form and also if we stretch it picture will stretch with it okay, so let's do the heart class first and then we can come back to the main form to draw it onto the screen so right now the heart class is completely empty so i'm just going to make some space on the inside of it uh, we will also need a using system.drawing we need the namespace to have access to the image class so i'm going to create a couple of public variables here say uh, public position x oh, x Okay. position y int speed y we only need the one speed value uh, so we need a public and um, height health and we also need a width okay so with that done um, we're gonna need a couple of internal ones uh, i think we only need one more public is the image just call this one hot okay that's going to be the image that we load up into this um class here okay and um, we're going to need a random rand is equal to new random so just to generate a random number we need one for frames so integer for frames and that's all we need for the hot variable let's create the constructor so the constructor will have the same name as the class so called heart with a capital H and then this one is also called a heart with a capital H. Right, so whenever we create a new class the constructor will be called so we can pretty much give it like a, some um, default values of the heart image that we want to display. Okay so inside of this one we can say um, heart so now this time around we are referencing this heart image here. Okay I'm going to say image from file so as the heart loads, I want to load it up with the very first frame. The images slash one.png. That's the PNG file that we have saved, right? Um the height, we can give it like a 85. And width is equals to 105. So I did play around with these numbers before. Um, I mean, you know, for your project, you can always change it around and see what looks best. And the speed Y is going to be the value um, the speed of which is going to use to go move up on the screen okay it's going to be a rand dot next move somewhere between 2 and 10. So it's not too fast but we can still see the animation as the image is moving up and then let's clean up the empty spaces here uh, i'm going to make a public function to call it void the animate heart right so this one we're going to be able to call from outside the class because it's a public function okay and in this one we're going to say if um, frames is less than 11 uh, because we have 12 images all together so if it goes above um, 11 which means 12 then we want to reset it back to 
0 or 1 again. Okay. So if the frame is less than 11, we can uh, increment the frames, right? So increment it by 1. And then we can say heart is equals to image dot from file. We are after the capital. After the images folder. Plus we want to add the frames as a concatenation here. And then the file extension is PNG. And when it's hit above 11, 12, we want the frames to go back to zero again. So we can reset it and then it can keep running in an infinite loop basically. Let's get to this empty lines here. Okay, so that's pretty much it what we need for the heart class. We have the um, global variables here. So some of the public ones that we need to have access to from outside. And then we have some internal ones such as random and frames. Look at the constructor loading over the first frame, setting a height and width and the speed y. And then lastly, we're adding a function that called animate heart. And then this one is just going to be looping through the frames of the images that we are going to be loading from that folder. Okay, let's go to our form now. So right at the top, let's put in the variables that we need. So we need a, another random, right? New random. Okay, so because they are declared in two separate classes, they are seen as two separate variables. So they're not going to be overlapping with each other. Okay, we need a list of heart. So that's the heart class. We'll call this one hearts. Let's do new list heart and then the brackets. Okay, so any all of the hearts that we're going to be adding, we can add it inside of this. And we can add all those hearts inside of the um, set a form function. So we we'll just make some space underneath here and say for um, i is equal to zero, i is less than, how many do we want to say 50? So if we just try to like instantiate 50 different um, hearts onto the screen and then have them move up gradually as with the timer. Okay, so let's go ahead and create those. Let's say heart, new heart is equal to new heart like so. Okay, uh, new heart oh, position x. So see this position x here is directly correlating with the position x that we created here for the heart. All right. So what we want to do is we want to randomly spawn it across the board. So it's just going to be spawned underneath the screen, but we don't want it to spawn in one place. It's going to be randomly spawned. Just going to say run dot next um, somewhere between say n and this size dot width um say minus 100 so within the border of this right so it's going to go from 10 from this angle and then minus 100 from this angle because the way the hearts are quite wide so i don't want it to be like you know outside of this border there i need it to stay within the frame okay. that's a new heart instead of new heart okay, that would have made it confusing to read Okay, let's go new heart again. Dot position y this time is equals to um, this dot line size dot height um, plus brand I'll get hash dot next dot next between say 300 and 1200. So what this is going to do is it's going to calculate the height of the form. So right now the height of the form is 800 and it's going to add a little bit on top of it. So everything spawns on the bottom of the form. So um, whenever it goes up, it looks like it's actually coming from the bottom instead of just appearing at the bottom of the form. Right. And lastly, we need to add the new heart to the hearts list. Right. So all 50 of them will be added to the list and then by using the list we'll be able to animate and draw them onto the screen okay, so first let's draw them on the screen we call the graphics class poly canvas is equals to e dot graphics so the e comes from right here so that's the event paint event right and we link in it to a graphics variable called canvas and then we can say canvas dot draw image and the image that we're interested to draw is going to be the heart, right? So in order for us to now access the 
parts we have to run a for loop sorry for each loop inside of the draw function so i'm just gonna go here and add a for each loop first uh, let's go for add a for each loop and say um the type that we after is a heart i'm gonna call it new heart like so and then hearts dot to list okay so everything that's inside of the heart we know is the heart class and then we can draw all of them from inside and inside of here now i can say canvas draw image and then say new heart dot heart so that's the image that we want because the first argument is the image and then after that we need to say the position x position y and height and width yep. and let's say new heart dot position x new heart dot position y new heart dot width and then new heart dot yep. so that's all we need to do so basically anything that exists inside of the list is going to be drawn onto the screen using the canvas and then draw image function. Okay, um, there isn't a point why this shouldn't work at the moment. Let's try it. At the moment, it's nothing's being drawn. I wanted to see if I can add some of them. As you can see on the right, the bottom there, you can see that there's a couple of hearts that are appearing, right? So you go one, two, three, four, five. So these are being drawn right now. Um, by the draw function right and they're quite nicely transparent you can still see the background a little bit on there as well and the cats still look very cute so we can close that so we need to do the magic where the hearts are now moving upwards and we also need to run the animate function inside of the timer uh, because we have an interval on the timer for 20 basically anything any instruction that we put inside of it is going to basically get rerun again and again every 20 milliseconds Okay, so let's try to do that now. So I'm gonna run another for each loop here. Okay, let's go and call the heart type. New heart again. And then go through the hearts list. Let's do the two list. Okay. So inside of the loop, now we're gonna say new heart animate heart. That's it. So now we're gonna have access to the animate heart function. Right, and then we got the new heart so position y is going to be minus equals to new heart dot speed y so depending on what value of the speed is generated here we're going to move it up with that so that way it's slightly more independent than all of them moving up at the same speed okay so let's run this now anyway let's see how it works Let's see if any of them are coming up. Oh. As you can see right now, I have to move this form. So the reason this is happening is because I've not invalidated the form yet because it's, it's only doing that each time it refreshes, right? So it's only repainting it because the timer is running in the background, but it's only repainting each time only when the form refreshes, which is when I change the um height and the width of the form by dragging it so fix that and just call say this dot invalidate every 20 milliseconds so every 20 milliseconds is going to invalidate the form basically erase everything that's been drawn on the form and then straight after it's going to redraw it with the new values let's take a look at how this works oh new problem okay uh, double buffer definitely double buffer if you go to the main form now um, you can go and find the double buffered option here so if you turn that true instead of false let's try it again okay now here we are so as you can see animations are a lot smoother now okay so there's the there's pretty much all of them there i guess actually looks quite nice um it's very smooth so there's we're not losing anything in the frame rate or something like that right uh one 
other problem that we have at the moment is once they've gone past the screen right either we need to create new ones or we need to recycle the ones that we have so uh, for the sake of um keeping the memory limit on the program low right so it doesn't clog up the memory too much we're just going to be recycling them okay so inside the timer event but the for each where we adding the speed to it we can also check if the our shapes have gone past a certain amount right so we're going to say if you want the position y is a less than minus 100 so it's gone past minus 100 uh, position on the form this has gone past over there right um, in that case we can just say new art well, position y is equals to this dot client size dot height um, plus rand dot next uh, we can give it about 200 to about 500 so just generate a random number so that way it's not too far down it's still within the parameters where we need it it's just a new hard the position x is equals to run dot next um, between 10 and this size dot width minus 100 okay so it's just going to um, randomly generate the x and the y value for the heart so it's indefinitely going to be moving it uh, as soon as it goes to the top it's going to move it to the bottom so it can animate all the way back up again okay let's try this now so far so good This has been a fun tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, if this was at all helpful to you, please um, leave a like and a subscribe to the channel and it will really help me out and it will make these cats very happy. So, <laughs> and uh, I hope you have a good day and I will see you on the next tutorial.